Pretty Trades here, and this is the ultimate LED headlight showdown. I have seven different models, including halogens. We're going to test them all side by side in real world conditions in my car. I'm going to show you what they look like, what the output's like on all of these. And we actually have a really wide range of choices here. Uh, most of these are Chinese made bulbs, and the prices range from anywhere from $15 for a set of LED bulbs at the lowest end. At the highest end, they retail for $200. So this will kind of show you the differences between those price ranges. And these are all the bulbs I've included in the test. I'm gonna go through each of these and kind of give a quick overview of what they are. And we're gonna show you what the output looks like and we're gonna compare it to what the halogen standard bulbs are. And we're gonna see which ones do well, which ones do poorly, and which ones I would recommend. So over the years I've tested a whole lot of LED headlight bulbs. I've tested about 10 different types of H11 replacement bulbs. And I've done a lot of high beams as well and even fog lights. And I think the thing that I'm kind of shocked by is it, it's really hard to get a good idea of how well a bulb performs until you do a comparison to what the halogens look like because you can't really tell where the cutoff is. Just looking out with your eyes at, at an LED bulb shining, you look at it, it looks like there's a nice cutoff line. So the real question this, this will answer is, do LED bulbs mimic the halogen output and do they actually blind other drivers or is that a myth? So here we have the halogen bulbs. These typically are about $10 per bulb, so $20 for a set of these halogen bulbs. Next we have the Bavinci LEDs. These headlights retail for $18 a pair, so $9 per bulb. Then we have Aeropola, which retail for $40 a set, so $20 per bulb. I also tested the LazFit LA Plus series, and those were $56 for a set, and about $26, $27 per bulb. Then we have the MyLit Cool, which are $70 for a set, about $35 per bulb. Then we have the Torch Beam T5, which are about $60 per set, which is $30 a bulb. Then we have Auxitos H11, and these are $70 a set, which are about $35 a bulb as well. And then lastly, we have the Diode Dynamics, which are about $200 retail, and so that's about $100 per bulb. So you tell me which bulb do you think performs the best and which one is the worst. So now with the retail prices, um, most of these bulbs you will find that they go on sale pretty frequently or are on sale almost all the time, especially on Amazon. I've got a link in the description for each of these bulbs and you can check out the, the details, the descriptions, those things. And you can also purchase them on there if you're interested in any of them. So for this test, my car is about 50 feet away from the wall here and I'm going to show you what I'm doing with this board and making these markings on this board in a second. As you can see, you get a really good idea of what the output is on these headlights and how they shine. And it's not, it's, it's worth noting that not only is the cutoff point important, but also if they spread light up higher up above the cutoff or not, because you can get some rogue lights shining up there if they aren't set up exactly right in the housing. So that's a, a big part of it as well. Okay, so you might've been asking why I had that board up there on the wall and what I was doing when I was marking it. So what I was doing is I had this board up here and I would go up by the wall and I'd look down and I'd watch at the headlights. And where the cutoff point is, it's kind of hard to see. You can see it, but it's kind of got a gradient. So what I was doing is I was finding the visual cutoff point from someone who would be looking at the headlights. So I would go down and once the lights got super bright where I could tell it just flicked like they turned on at that point, I would mark it exactly where my eyes were on the board. And this bottom line here is the halogen bulbs. I want you to guess, tell me in the comments where you think all the other bulbs lie. What's down here closest to the halogen bulbs? What's kind of in the middle range? And what's way up here out in outer space? So we'll see if this correlates to the price of the bulb or not. So when I set these up this way, it's kind of good to get a better view of the whole picture and have them side by side. You can see where it has glare up at the top or if it lights up down by the bottom more. And you can really get a good comparison of how the headlights perform compared to each other and compared to the halogen bulbs as well, which is super important to do. Um, and then this next one here, I took a little quick, quick screenshot and I put it right at the same height so everything's lined up exactly and you can see these in a perfect line. And it's kind of funny, this is based on price. So the cheapest is over on the left, the Bavinci's, most expensive on the right, Diodynamics SL1's. And you can kind of see as you go from left to right, the, the, 
you can just see how the light goes lower and lower and lower to where the SL1s are and the halogen bulbs are. So it does kind of follow that correlation. Now there definitely are a few outliers. I think the LASFIT is a really awesome bulb for the price. The LA Plus series seems to be made very well. And the Oxido again is another very good bulb for the price. Um, but it is pretty straightforward and pretty similar to the price of the bulb is pretty close to how well they perform. All right, so here's the results of this test. And it's pretty interesting. It does kind of go from most expensive to the least expensive bulb. There's a few in the middle here that are kind of swapped around where that's not true. So this bottom one is the halogen bulb. Then we have the Diodynamic SL1, which is only about a half an inch off. And the distance my car was from the wall is about 50 feet or so. So we have the halogen, the Diodynamic SL1, LASFIT, I don't have these bulbs because they're in my wife's car right now, the LASFIT LA Plus series. We have Oxido, which is right here. So all these three bulbs are actually pretty good bulbs to use. I would highly recommend all three of these. Um, and the Oxido and the, LA, and the LASFIT. Um, if you're looking to save, a, save some money and you don't quite want to spend the Diodynamic money, these are two awesome bulbs as well. And I've had these Oxidas I've actually had for about five years and they're still working uh, to this date. So I really like these bulbs here. Um, again, you can't go wrong with the Diodynamics though. Very, very good bulb. Then we have these ones, the Torch Beam T5, the My Lit Cool uh, H11 and the Aeropola. And then way up here we got the Bavinci, the $15 for a pair LED lights. And so it's pretty straightforward seeing this and seeing the comparison pictures. Now, um, going into this, I thought that there would be quite a few bulbs that did really well because I kind of assume they all kind of use the same chips, the same boards, the same setup for all of these bulbs. And I was really skeptical about the Diodynamics SL1. I didn't think the price for the Diodynamics bulbs would be worth, would be justified. I just thought they were way too expensive and you could save a lot of money by going with one of the mid-grade bulbs maybe and still getting some really good light output and not blinding other people. And the more I've thought about this, the more it feels like it's Diodynamics versus everybody else when you look at the LED bulb segment. Um, the one other thing that I noticed is that Diodynamics is slightly different. This bulb is very heavy compared to the rest of these. Overall, they're all pretty similar in weight, and that's because all of them, except for the Diodynamics SL1s, all of them use an aluminum casing, and they all have fans on them to help with cooling. The SL1 also has a fan to help with cooling, but the weight is much more substantial. What they do is they use a zinc shell to help with the cooling, and the way that the Diodynamics team designs these bulbs, it, it makes it so that it's a lot less heat that's created um, with the circuit board. Now, I will say, after testing all these bulbs and taking them out because I changed them all right after using them, they all were pretty warm when I used them. They all were much cooler than the halogen light. Um, the Di Diodynamics bulb was a little bit cooler, but they all were pretty warm after being run for a couple minutes. So before I started this test, I was really, I really didn't understand the Diodynamics SL1 bulb. I really thought it was gimmicky. It was just for the name. You're paying for the brand, the USA made, um, and, and the name. I say, hey, I got Diodynamics, and people think it's a cool brand. So I thought that's why it was so expensive. But after doing this test, I'm realizing that they actually took a lot more time than most of these other brands to get the bulb right because it's the closest one to matching the stock halogen bulb by quite a bit. And if you look at the cutoff lines, you can see that it's a much lower than all the other LED bulbs. And that's why it does cost so much money. It is a very good bulb and I do highly recommend it. The other thing too that I noticed, compared to all the other bulbs, when you tighten these in the sockets, the tolerances are much tighter. So when you tighten and turn it in there, it doesn't wiggle around at all. And what's good about that is they have to align these LEDs exactly where the filament is on the halogen bulbs. And if there's any wiggle, if it can move a little bit, then it's probably not going to be put in the exact right place. And that's why it causes glare or it shines the lights up higher than they're supposed to be shined. Um, and, and it's very noticeable. You can see there's a little bit of NARF marks on here from when I was installing it because you really have to push it in there good and turn it really tightly because it, the tolerances, again, are very tight. If you look at this bulb here, look how tiny the little paddles are that hold it. 
it's like microscopic compared to the ones over here. Like even the bigger one here, they're just so much smaller and they wiggle a lot when they're in the housing. And so again, that causes a lot of excess glare and the lights do not mimic the halogen bulbs. So I, again, I was just really surprised at how expensive these were at first, but after testing them, I realized why they're so expensive. It's because they're very good. And if you're, if you're looking to purchase any of these bulbs, check out the link in the description to purchase them and check them out on Amazon.